Okay, so if you homeschool pre-algebra, well then your student should be able to do this problem pretty easily without the aid of a calculator. Now before I uh, describe the problem, of course you can see it right here, but uh, the whole point of this video is to use this as a kind of a diagnostics or check for understanding. So you definitely want to have your student write out all the steps and if they don't get a particular step right, well that's feedback for you to work on that particular math skill. But let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So we have brackets one half cubed times parentheses six squared plus 30 divided by five times three and parentheses divided by six. Uh, and then of course, and brackets. All right, so the only rule here is no calculator. You definitely want to have your student write uh, everything out step by step. Now, if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through uh, this problem and the solution step by step, and I will be emphasizing some very important math concepts that your student should uh, really be mastering at this level of mathematics. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. I'm also the founder of TC Math Academy and tabletclass.com. Uh, my uh, tablet class site is an award-winning homeschool math curriculum. So if you need uh, help with homeschooling middle and high school level mathematics, I'm going to leave all my homeschool math uh, course links in the description of this video to include homeschool pre-algebra. But uh, before we get started, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. And let's go ahead and get into the actual solution here. And then, of course, we'll walk through how to do this problem. So the correct answer is 9 over 8. All right, now, if your student got uh, this right, that is fantastic. So it's a good check for understanding in a particular area called the order of operations. And this is critical, okay? And a lot of students actually uh, confuse this. And uh, when you learn the order of operations, there's an acronym that goes along with that called PEMDAS. So that's what we're talking about here. And students have to really understand this. And a lot of students uh, think they understand this actually better than they uh, really do. So let's go ahead and review um, how to do this particular problem. And of course, if your uh, student made any errors, you can kind of correct those uh, because I'm going to break this down step by step. All right, so this is just going to be a quick review on the order of operations. Now, in mathematics, we have these things called mathematical operators. So those would be uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and powers, and some other things. Now, when we have a problem like this, we have a lot of different mathematical operations going on. So we have addition. This is division. We have multiplication. Division again. We have powers and powers and more multiplication. So the, uh, the order in... Uh, the way we do this problem, if we take different orders, in other words, if we decide, you know, I think I'm going to add first and then maybe I'll multiply or divide next, or maybe I'll divide and then I'll multiply or multiply and then divide. So you can see here that the order is going to, um, the order that we choose to take is going to produce uh, various um, results, right? Of course, there's only one right order, only uh, one correct answer. So this is the topic called order of operations. You have to know the correct order of operations. And the best way to remember that, um, the best way to remember the correct order of operations is using this little acronym right here called PEMDAS. Now, most students are familiar with this, but uh, let me give you a little mnemonic, a little memory aid here uh, that goes along with this. And then, of course, uh, I'm going to tell you what these letters stand for. So uh, the little mnemonic or memory uh, device is Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS. Now, most of your students are pretty sure have heard of this uh, phrase. And now let's go ahead and explain what this is. All right, so this is a checklist and it works from left to right. So these letters obviously stand for something. So let's go ahead and explain that right now. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So if you see parentheses, you're going to do what's inside those parentheses. Now, obviously, in our, our problem here, we have some parentheses, but we also have some brackets. So P really stands for grouping symbols. Uh, any notation that groups numbers together um, or a group of numbers together is you know, falls into this category of P. So you can have parentheses like, this, parentheses like this or brackets or even these type of squiggly brackets. And the way this works is that you're going to work from the 
innermost parentheses. So if you have a problem and there's some uh, you know mathematical operations going on here, you're going to start there. Once you're done here, you're going to continue to work um, you know uh, outside of those parentheses because you'll be finished with that. So you can see here we actually have some parentheses and we have some brackets. So this falls under the P. So we're going to focus on that first. Now, as I explain this, a lot of you are going to be, you know, uh, you know, determining whether, in fact, you did this right. Because, you know, if you understand uh, PEMDAS, then you'll be, uh, be able to do this problem successfully. Of course, assuming that you have basic math skills like addition, uh, division, uh, multiplication, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so let's move on to E. Now, E uh, uh, stands for exponents, but it really means power. So if you th have things like this... 2 to the third power, this is what we want to do next. Now, some of you might be saying, well, if it's powers, why is it not uh, P? Well, uh, the E is an exponent, and the exponent is this part of a power. So 2 to the third power, this part here is called the exponent, and this big number down here is called the base. The entire uh, thing here is a power, so E stands for exponents. Okay, so the next step here, okay, matter of fact, let me just tell you what the these letters stand for. So M, D, A, and S, if you're saying, well, does this stand for multiplication, division, uh, addition, and subtraction, you would be correct. Now, this is probably one of the most commonly confused areas of basic math. Most people think that the next thing that you're going to do, no matter what, is multiplication because it's the next thing on our checklist from left to right, and that makes sense. And then after all the multiplication is done, you're going to move on to division, do all division if there's any division, and then, of course, move on to addition and subtraction. So that makes sense. However, that's not the way it works, right? Now, the way this actually works is that M and D and A and S are groups. So you're going to do multiplication or division next in this checklist, whatever you see first from left to right. So if we have multiplication, then division, we're going to do it this way because multiplication comes first from left to right. But if we have division, then multiplication, we're going to do it this way because division comes first from left to right. And addition and subtraction uh, work the same way. Okay, so that is uh, PEMDAS, the order of operations. And if you understand this, well, then you should be able to get the right answer to this problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start um, going through the steps one by one. Again, if um, you know, your student did this problem and showed all their work, you can identify any errors. And, of course, you can work on that. But let's go ahead and get started now. And we'll keep that PEMDAS phrase in mind. And you always want to kind of be referring to it. Now, you don't have to always write this down on your paper, but it certainly needs to be, you know, in your mind's eye. Say, okay, well, PEMDAS. So are there any parentheses? Yes, there um, are. There's grouping symbols. We have brackets, and then we have these inner parentheses, but we're going to start from the innermost parentheses. So that means that we're going to concentrate our efforts here, okay? So this is kind of like a problem within a problem. So we have 6 squared plus 30 divided by 5 times 3. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and focus on working out all this math right here. And uh, once we're done with uh, doing all of this and we have one value, and then we'll go ahead and consider, you know, um, these uh, parts of the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So 6 squared plus uh, 30 divided by 5 times 3. All right, so uh, again, we're going to just kind of concentrate on this as like a problem within a problem. So I'm going to be thinking about PEMDAS, right? So we already know that we are working inside the parentheses. So my next thing is, do I have any exponents? Do I have any powers? Well, obviously we do. We have 6 squared. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Okay, so 6 squared is going to be our first step because that is our exponent. Now, let's just kind of uh, walk this through. After we do this, what do you think is going to be our next step? So we have addition right here, this is division, and this is multiplication. So after the exponent, uh, the addition is way down over here, but we definitely have some multiplication and division. So what do you think is going to come first? You probably have the right answer, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that, and let's go to take those uh, steps right now. Okay, so 6 squared, obviously we're going to do powers first. So we have 36 plus 30 divided by 5 times uh, 3. Okay, so we have division before multiplication, right? So we're not going to do addition because we have multiplication and division. So we're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. So that is going to be the division. 
All right, so 30 divided by 5, of course, is 6. So we have 36 plus 6 times 3. Uh, pretty simple. We're going to do multiplication definitely before addition. So we have 36 plus 6 times 3, of course, is 18. So now we have 36 plus 18, which, of course, is 54. All right, so that is, again, it's like a problem within a problem. So going back over here, all of this work right here turned out to be 54. All right, so now our problem is brackets 1 half cubed times 54 divided by 6. So we have multiplication, and then we have division here, and then we also have powers uh, right here, right? We have an exponent. So let's go ahead and start working on this part of the problem right now. Okay, but uh, before we do that, I'm going to quickly ask you to uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Now, if you're new to my channel, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've been involved in math education for decades. I love teaching mathematics, and I help all different sorts of people, from you know public school students to homeschoolers. As a matter of fact, I have a great track or track record working with homeschoolers. I've been working with homeschoolers for a long time, and uh, definitely a great community. And I'm pretty proud that our system has actually uh, won a couple of big homeschool awards. So pretty sure if you do some review on tablet class math homeschooling, you'll find a lot of great testimonials. But uh, nevertheless, I just want you to know that I am the teacher in all of my, my math courses. And in my homeschool math courses, it's very comprehensive course. My philosophy is, you know, I'd like to kind of really teach at a very rigorous and comprehensive level because that's the only way to learn mathematics. So if you're struggling in homeschooling at any level, check out my uh, various homeschool math courses. If you have any questions, you can use a contact form at our site. But uh, let's go ahead and finish up this problem now. And uh, hopefully your student got this right. And if they didn't, no big deal. Uh, you know, uh, you can certainly just, you know, work on, uh, you know, weaknesses. That's just a part of learning mathematics. Okay, so here, we're going to do the powers, right? So we have powers, we have multiplication right here, right? And then we have division right here. So just looking at the multiplication and division, you can see the multiplication comes before division in this case, but we have to address the power. So one half cubed is what? Well, that's one half times one half times one half, which of course is one eighth. All right, so we're almost there. Now you can see all the steps that I'm writing out. And even if your student got this right, you want to judge their neatness and kind of the standard of their work, right? So in other words, if uh, someone like myself, you know, could I read all their work? Could I follow their work? So you want to really emphasize structure, neatness, organization. That's really important in mathematics. Okay, so we have 1 8 times 5, uh, 54 divided by 6. So we're going to do the multiplication here. So this is multiplication. So we're going to handle this uh, before we do the division. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So 1 8 times 54. Now we have to think in terms of fractions now. So we want to think of uh, 54 as a fraction, so we're just going to put it over 1 because when we multiply uh, fractions, we have to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So uh, the answer here is going to be 1 times 54 over 8 times 1, which of course is 54 over 8 divided by 6. And then uh, here, uh, because we have a fraction here, we want to think of 6 as a fraction, so we'll put this over 1. Okay, so now we get to divide fractions. Of course, everybody loves dealing with fractions. And remember, we're not doing this problem without the aid of a calculator. So we have 54 over 8 divided by 6 over 1. So how do we divide fractions? Well, we have to uh, uh, rewrite the problem from division to multiplication. And the way we do that is we flip the fraction to the right of the division sign. So it's, instead of 6 over 1, that's 1 over 6. And now we have a multiplication problem with fractions. So it's going to be 54 over 8 times 1 over 6. Again, without the aid of a calculator, 54 over 8 times 1 over 6 is going to be what? Well, 54 is the same thing as 6 times 9 times 1 over 8 times 6. But we have some common factors here between the numerator and denominator. So we can cross cancel this 6 with this 6, and we're left with 9 over 8, which of course is our answer. All right, so again, we're talking about pre-algebra, and I um, really do, you know, we, we're not doing anything with variables here. We're not even doing algebra. This is arithmetic, and we're not even really dealing with positive and negative numbers. But uh, here's the thing. Uh, from years and years of teaching this stuff, a lot of students get in trouble in algebra, okay, uh, if they 
um, if they really, well, there, a lot of their problems start not in algebra per se, but in basic math. Okay? And a lot of students just don't want to deal with it. They get excited about learning algebra. I'm like, hey, you know, I'll, I just want to concentrate on the algebra part. I already know uh, the order of operations. I already know fractions. You're going to hear this over and over again. I know that. I know that. I don't, I don't need to review that. You always want to double check those basic skills because they are essential, critical, uh, you know, for success at the algebra level. So again, if your student's having a tough time in pre-algebra or algebra one, go back to those basic skills, things like fractions, positive and negative numbers, and order of operations. Those are probably the top three uh, areas that students, if they're struggling in algebra, are probably uh, struggling in those areas as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. I definitely uh, wish you all the best in your homeschooling. And again, if you need uh, help, check out my homeschool math courses. Again, you'll find links to them in the description below. But uh, again, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.